Anyway, we're here for <laughs> dark, dark and creepy things. Things with Frank and Scout. Yay. We have a special guest again today. Yay. 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 It's Sindel. Yay. I'm here, everyone. Yay. 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 Sindel. And Sindel's going to run this episode for us. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, before Sindel does that, we have to thank people. Yes. Thank our patrons. Yes. Yes, our patrons are bitten by the bug. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Maker of Japanese textiles. You can find them on Etsy. Yes. Uh, we have Ira Francis. Yes, who the is the creator of The Bright Side Comic. Yeah, you can yes. search it on Google. On the Googles. Um, I'm also one of their patrons, so I get early release. You're a patron? I'm their patron. Oh, their patron. I thought you were saying that you're a patron of our podcast. I'm like, you no. don't need to be a patron of our no, podcast. No, I don't, because I spend enough money <laughs> on, this, on this show. Um, no, I'm one of our uh, patrons, patrons, patrons for the bright side. Yeah. So I get you're a better early, friend than I am. I get early I support patron, local I'm sorry. artists. I get, yeah, for a dollar, I get, um, you know, early release stuff sent to comics, emailed mm. to me. It's cool. Um, and our regular listeners, we have Sean, we have Maya, and we have Sindel. And Yay. look what happens when you get to be <laughs> a regular be listener episodes. and patron. Just, and annoying enough. And local. Like, just yeah. hit us up and yeah. <laughs> run an episode. So Sean and Maya, if you want to hit us up to run, I'm sure run they an will. episode, yeah, go, go for it. it. Go for it. I think it's cool to have different people to listen to. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yes. Cool, let's get started. Yeah. What have you got for us, Sindel? Oh, I have got a bit of a dark article we like for dark. you. Yeah, more dark than creepy. It's um, the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory Fire. Mm. Um, mm. I learned about it when I went to New York. Um, yeah, Sindel's more travelled than us. So. <laughs> more travelled than us. <laughs> we'll get there yeah. one day. Yeah, I learned about it just on a walking tour around um, sort of Washington Square. And that's something area. you like to do, don't you? I love it. I always try and do a walking tour wherever I go um, and like as early as I can in my trip so I get to know the place where I am and learn interesting stories. That's and I don't idea. know, you just find like, you just learn so much more about an area mm. when you, you know, learn the stories. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. true. Mm, we should do that. I've done one in Ballarat. Yeah, it was the ghost tour of Ballarat. Right. It wasn't. Oh, yeah. It wasn't creepy, but I loved the the, the historical side to it mm. and stuff I would never have known just by yeah. walking the streets of Ballarat. So I, yeah, I was sort of. I, I like, should do more walking tours. I liked the ghost tour when we went to Port Arthur for the yes, same reason. That was oh, because like that's my walking, favorite ghost tour. Same. Yeah. Why did Walk, I forget about that one? Walking around Port Arthur by yourself was cool because like looking at the parks and you could take it at your own pace, but. When you did the ghost tour, you can actually yeah, hear no, like yeah. the random stories that you don't mm. get to hear just by looking at the parks and stuff. Yeah, the stuff that isn't on the parks. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, exactly. Love it. Yeah, so good. Such a haunted place. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Do you remember so when you, Frank? Do you remember when you screamed <laughs> in the? That walk? wasn't even a ghost. That was the. Was that when they moved? The yeah, thing? the skull. The skull. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you screamed and everyone else screamed and I just stood there laughing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like. Whoa! <laughs> I've, I've been on that tour about four times now. You still jump? And no, because I know it's coming now. I think the first two times I like jumped and screamed, and then after that, I just I started watching. Yes, for people. Yeah, yeah that's pretty much. I was, was going to be like, this one looks like a screamer to me. <laughs> I was pretty much like, I know Frank's going to scream at some point. <laughs> uh, normally, you're not the kind of... I'm a cynic. I don't know. I'm, massive cynic. I'm a massive, massive cynic. I'm a massive you jump. Cynic. You're scary. Well, that's because, yeah, I do scare easy, but I'm a huge cynic. <laughs> then why do you scare easy? I don't know. I don't know. I just do. <laughs> so, factory fire. Yes. So, um, yeah, like, like I said, learned about it on this tour. Um, and it, you'd kind of walk past this building in New York and you wouldn't know unless you went up right close and looked for the plaque on it. So, yeah, it was really interesting to learn this story. So I'll, I'll get into the Wikipedia article. Yep. The Triangle Shirtwaist Factory Fire in New York City on March 25th, 1911 was the deadliest industrial disaster in the history of the city and one of the deadliest in US history. Hmm. The fire caused the deaths of 146 garment workers, 123 women and 23 men who died from the fire, smoke inhalation, or falling or jumping to their deaths. Ooh. Mm. Yeah, it's a pretty tall was, building. I was going to say, was it a, yeah, obviously, yeah. it was a tall building. Yeah. Wow. 
Uh, most of the victims were recent Italian and Jewish immigrant women aged 14 to 23. Wow. Of the victims whose ages were known, the oldest victim was 43-year-old Providenza Pano, and the youngest were 14-year-olds Kate Leone and Rosaria Sara Maltese. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So young. Very young. The factory was located on the 8th, 9th and 10th floors of the Ash Building at hmm. 23 to 29 Washington Place in the Greenwich Village neighbourhood of Manhattan. The 1901 building still stands today and hmm. is known as the Brown Building. It's part of and owned by New York University, hmm. which I learnt on this tour, interesting hmm. tidbit, is the second largest landowner in New York City after the Catholic Church. Wow. Really? Yeah, New York Uni. Wow, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. After the Catholic Church. Huh. Yes. That doesn't surprise me. No. I mean, not surprising. I thought you were going to say something like Rockefeller or something. Or after Trump. Oh. I think, I mean, I Trump think yeah, or... they're probably in the top yeah. 10. Yeah. But yeah, yeah number one and two too. is Catholic Church and NYU. Wow. Yeah. That's so cool. Mm. Well, it's cool that, yeah. NYU is the second one. Yeah, and that you went there. And obviously the brown building still mm. standing. Yeah. Mm. But, yeah. Still there. Um, I think from memory it might have been like a sciences or a chemistry building, okay. something along those lines. Oh, wow. Yeah. Is it uh, still as tall? Yeah, I think so. Huh. It's still a tall building. Hmm. Yeah. All right, and this is where it gets a bit dark. Um, because the doors to the stairwells and exits were locked, which was a then common practice to prevent workers from taking unauthorised breaks and uh, to reduce theft, many geez. of the workers could, um, who could not escape from the burning building jumped from the high windows. Oh, well. Uh, the fire led to legislation requiring improved factory safety standards and helped spur the growth of the International Ladies' Garment Workers Union, hmm. which fought for better working conditions for sweatshop workers. Uh, and the building has been designated a National Historic Landmark and New York City Landmark. Oh, good. Mm. Yeah. So... I mean, bad that that happened, but <laughs> good that those good things happened mm. from such an awful event. A yeah. bit of a theme here from last fort night's episode about how we were talking about yeah. the, um, what's radium it called? Girls. The radium girls. Well, I think that's what prompted it, wasn't mm. it? Yes. we were talking about the episode and, and about workers' rights. Yes. yes. Things like that. And I said, oh, had you heard of this? That's right. Mm. Yeah. 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 I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> when you first said it to you, it was just like a bunch of words. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> triangle shirt waist factory fire. What's a like, shirt waist? Uh, what, what, why is what's a, a triangle, triangle in it? Yeah, what's a triangle? <laughs> What's with the name? Well, this next part <laughs> well, goes on to talk about what Ooh, show is okay. up. We'll All it. right. So the Triangle Waste Company factory occupied the 8th, 9th and 10th floors of the 10-storey Ash Building on the northwest corner of Green Street and Washington Place, just east of Washington Square Park in Greenwich Village. Um, under the ownership of Max Blank and Isaac Harris, the factory produced women's blouses known as shirtwaists. Okay. Shirtwaist. At the time, yep. The factory normally employed about 500 workers, mostly young immigrant women who worked nine hours a day on weekdays plus seven hours on Saturdays, earning for their 52 hours of work between seven and twelve dollars a week, which was the equivalent of 191 to 327 dollars a week in 2018 currency or equating to three dollars 67 to six dollars 29 per hour. Jeez, that is well sucks. below minimum wage. Yeah, but that also got to remember the price of living changes as well. Mm. But even then, that's like yeah, fucking even then. nothing. <laughs> Imagine working fifty-two hours and only getting like not even three hundred dollars. I would cry. Yeah, yeah so pretty many much. Years. Instead of getting they... pay and going, oh, you'd be yeah. like, wow, well, well, yeah. can't oh, even pay is, half um, my rent. Mm. I mean, and as bad as that. Um, yeah, as bad as like minimum wage is in so many places mm. in the US, these ladies didn't get tips. Yeah. True. True. Yeah. And so blouses were not blouses. They were Yeah, yeah, women's shirt waist. Like blouses. Um, women, women's blouses. I think it was a potentially a particular style cuz um it goes yeah. on to talk about uh, okay. some other things around it. Yeah. So at approximately 4:40 p.m. on Saturday, March 25th, 1911, as the workday was ending, a fire flared up in a scrap bin under one of the cutters tab- tables at the northeast corner of the 8th floor. The first fire alarm was sent at 4:45 by a passerby on Washington Place who saw smoke coming from the 8th floor. 
Both owners of the factory were in attendance and had invi- invited their children to the factory on that afternoon. <laughs> the fire marshal concluded that the likely cause of the fire was the disposal of an unextinguished match or cigarette mm. butt in the scrap bin mm. which held two months' worth of accumulated cuttings by the time of the fire. Mm. Beneath the table in the wooden bin were hundreds of pounds of scraps left over from the several thousand shirt waists that had been cut at that table. Yeah. The scraps piled up from the last time the bin was empty, coupled with the hanging fabrics that surrounded it. The steel wow. trim was the only thing that was not flammable. Hmm. And although smoking was banned in the factory, cutters were known to sneak cigarettes, exhaling the smoke through their lapels to avoid detection. <laughs> Uh, a New York Times article suggested that the fire may have been started by the engines running the sewing machines. Uh, okay. And a series of articles in Colliers noted a pattern of arson among certain sectors of the garment industry whenever their particular product fell out of fashion oh. or had excess inventory in order to collect insurance. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. The arson ins- was a bigger thing back then. Yeah, but well. nowadays people can't get away with no, it. No, exactly, but it used to be a way bigger thing. <laughs> yeah, because people can get away with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can't get away with it anymore. No. Well, I thought this was interesting. The Insurance Monitor, a leading industry journal, observed that shirt waists had recently fallen out of fashion mm-hmm. and that the that insurance for manufacturers of them was fairly saturated with moral hazard. Although oh. Blank and Harris were known for having had four previous suspicious fires at their companies, arson was not suspected what? in this oh, case. What? Oh, no. What? Oh, they had another fire. They yeah. had four fires and oh. another one. They and and their one. garments have but, just gone out of fashion. But they were there and their kids were there that day. Mm-hmm. That's just a ploy. Yeah. That's just covering it up. They're not going to suspect us because we brought the children to work today. Um. <laughs> But also, like, I like... Crooked business, It's also... Okay, I can understand the whole... Yeah, like, the match going into the bin full of scraps, that makes sense. Because if you think about it, that's really flammable stuff. And yeah, a but lot of they it. would have been bloody smart enough to not put their matches in the... But if someone's just flicking it, like, carelessly... Yeah. It's inside, right? It or if, if, like, they were worried someone was going to catch them. Yeah. And they're just like, oh, quickly, just, just chuck it down True. there. Oh, they, they tried to extinguish it in the bin and it didn't extinguish yeah. completely and then it caught. Still, it's a bit sus. They've had four other fires in their factory. Like, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I don't think the whole course by the sewing machine has enough no. have, has enough evidence mm-hmm. to say that was, but the other two make sense. Yeah. yeah. A bookkeeper on the eighth floor was able to warn employees on the tenth floor via telephone, but there was no audible alarm and no way to contact staff on the ninth floor. Oh, oh no. God. According to survivor Yetta Lubitz, the first warning of the fire on the ninth floor arrived at the same time as the fire itself. <laughs> oh, wow. Although the floor had a number of exits, including two freight elevators, a fire escape, and stairways down to Green Street and Washington Place, flames prevented workers from descending the Green Street stairway, and the door to the Washington Place stairway was locked to prevent theft by the workers. The locked doors allowed managers to check the women's purses. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. It's awful. And the foreman who held the stairway door key had already escaped via another route. (laughs) Oh, of course, he, has, he, probably he, had, he probably had a bloody heads up. Yeah. yeah. We're going to set fire to the imagine factory be, today. Imagine being oh, that, early, Bob. Imagine that foreman just going out there going, oh, wait, shit, I just left like 100 women in that building to yeah. burn to death. Yeah, yeah, he probably got paid 50 bucks. <laughs> Come out this way. <laughs> Um, Dozens of employees escaped the fire by going up the Green Street stairway to the roof. Other survivors were able to jam themselves into the elevators while they continued to operate. Mm. Within three minutes, the Green Street stairway became unusable in both directions. Terrified employees crowded onto the single exterior fire escape, which city officials had allowed Ash to erect instead of the required third staircase, a flimsy and poorly anchored iron structure that may have been broken before the fire. Hmm. It soon twisted and collapsed from the heat and overload, spilling about 20 victims nearly 100 feet or 30 metres to their deaths below, uh, on the concrete below. Mm. Yeah. It's awful. Yeah. Um, Especially mm. more so, of course, if it was deliberate, like... Yeah. Yeah, that's fucked. I mean, one thing to collect the insurance money because, yeah, your shirts, your factory, whatever, but then, yeah, kill all these people. I mean, if you wanted to collect the insurance money, wouldn't you just do it at night? Yeah. So Mm. nobody was in the factory? Yeah, exactly. Well, this is the thing is I think it went on to, um, the article goes on to talk about 
uh, like a lawsuit mm, yeah. brought against them. So it cost them more in the end, I think. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, but back on the fire, the elevator operators, Joseph Zito and Gaspar Mortilalo, saved many lives by traveling three times up to the ninth floor for passengers, but Mortilalo was eventually forced to give up when the rails of his elevator buckled under the heat. Oh, yeah. Some victims pried the elevator doors open and jumped into the empty shaft, trying to slide down the cables mm. or to land on top of the car. The weight and impacts of these bodies warped the elevator car and made it impossible for Zito to make another attempt. William Gunn Shepherd, a reporter at the tragedy, would say that I learned a new sound that day, a sound more horrible than description can picture. Oh, the, th wow. the thud of a speeding living body on a stone sidewalk. Jeez, yeah, that'd be awful. Mm. And All right. even once firefighters arrived, their ladders were only long enough to reach as high as the seventh floor. Oh, far out. Mm. A large crowd of bystanders gathered on the street witnessing 62 people jumping or falling to their deaths from the burning building. Mm. All, right. All I can picture, though, is like 9-11. Right. And watching, yeah. watching yes. that live on TV yeah. and actually seeing... And that seeing... guy falling out of the That was window. many people. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, there's, there's, that one, there's that one iconic image, photo, of yeah. that, that image of that one person like almost somersaulting out of the window yeah. but actually as someone as an adult watching it yeah. live on tv mm. you would seriously um, i remember being on the phone to one of my friends at this time it was happening and i'm just like is that bodies is that is that, mm. is that rubble was that bodies coming out of the like those people just flinging Falling. themselves off yeah out yeah. because there was no way out like yep. yeah yeah it reminds you of that that's so so messed up yeah. not the first time it happened in new york yeah yeah exactly yeah. exactly Mm. Louis Waldman, later a New York Socialist State Assemblyman, described the scene years later mm. um, and, quote, one Saturday afternoon in March of that year, March 25th to be precise, I was sitting at one of the reading tables in the old Astor Library. It was a raw, unpleasant day and the comfortable reading room seemed a delightful place to spend the remaining few hours until the library closed. I was deeply engrossed in my book when I became aware of fire engines racing past the building. By this time, I was sufficiently Americanized to be fascinated by the sound of fire engines. Along with several others in the library, I ran out to see what was happening and followed crowds of people to the scene of the fire. A few blocks away, the ash building at the corner of Washington Place and Green Street was ablaze. When we arrived at the scene, the police had thrown up a cordon around the area and firemen were helplessly fighting the blaze. The eighth, ninth and tenth stories of the building were now an, an enormous roaring cornice, cornice of flames. Oh, wow. Word had spread through the east side by some magic of terror that the plant of the Triangle Waste Company was on fire and that several hundred workers were trapped. Horrified and helpless, the crowds, I among them, looked up at the burning building, saw girl after girl appear at the reddened windows, pause for a terrified moment and then leap to the pavement below to land as a mangled bloody pulp. Ugh, far out. It's like what yeah even yeah again even thinking about 9-11 like trying to put yourself in that situation be like what am i going to burn to death or yeah. am i going to you know at Though least have some I have, own volition of this and i have out of heard building. that burning to death is the most painful, painful. i've heard yeah. that too yeah. yeah yeah so you probably would be better off jumping out the window yeah 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 um continuing the quote uh this went on for what seemed like a ghastly eternity Occasionally, a girl who had hesitated too long was licked by pursuing flames and, screaming with clothing and hair ablaze, mm. plunged like a living torch to the street. Life nets held by the firemen were torn by the impact of the falling bodies. Mm. The emotions of the crowd were indescribable. Women were hysterical, scores fainted. Men wept as, in paroxysms of frenzy, they held themselves against the police lines. Jeez. Mm. What year was this? 1911. Wow. Year before the Titanic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. I just remember because I read a book that talked about both of the disasters mm. at the uh -huh. same time. Yeah, it, it was a fiction book. So Titanic was 1912. 1912, yeah. Yeah. April 14, 1912. Sounds about right. Mm. Oh, yeah. It does sound about right. Yeah, about right. <laughs> How did you know that? I don't know. I know we'd I'm going to look it up. <laughs> hey Wikipedia, when was... Is that like a conspiracy? You've got the year 1911 and then 911? I don't know. No, oh, I don't know. Oh, oh. Ma maybe you could start one. Maybe. Starting you. <laughs> you heard it first. Um, I started a conspiracy about buildings in New York. Yeah. 
April 14th, you are correct. Oh, no. random right things year? that you know. Yes, 160 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Oh, once when I was in a um, escape room, one of the codes was Hitler's birthday, and I have to know it. I know, I knew it, and I was just like, I can't explain why I know this. I'm gonna not. What is Hitler's birthday? I don't even I, know that one. April something. Yeah, it, it, I can't is remember it now. It was like it's April twentieth, or it's like my brother's it was in the twenties somewhere. Oh wow! On April, but I can't. I can't remember now. Yeah, looking it up. It's okay. Birthday. <laughs> Hitler's birthday is the thirtieth of April. No, died thirtieth of April. Yeah, nineteen forty-five. It was born on the 20th of April, 1889. Oh my God. 20th of April. Yes. Yeah. The day before my brother's birthday. Okay. But oh. not that long after yours. No. But over a hundred years before yours. Yes. <laughs> over a hundred <laughs> Just, Just to be clear. All right. Um, well, we're into the section of the aftermath. Although early references of the death toll range from 141 to 148, almost all modern references agree that 146 people died as a result of the fire, 123 women and 23 men. Most victims died of burns, asphyxiation, blunt impact injuries, or a combination of the three. I was going to say, take your pick, but yeah. Mm, right. Yeah. I didn't have a combo of the three as well. Oh, this is sad. The first person to jump was a man and another... Another man was seen kissing a young woman at the window before they both jumped to their deaths. Oh, wow. Bodies of the victims were taken to Charities Pier, also called Misery Lane, <laughs> located at 26th Street and the East River for identification by friends and relatives. I'm just laughing at the names of them. Misery, <laughs> Lane. Misery Lane. Imagine knowing mm. and finding out that your loved one died yeah. and they're like... Got taken oh, off to misery oh lane. we want you to mm. identify the body. It's Meet a misery, you at misery, no, misery lane. lane. Mm. Oh, oh, so oh, maybe, that's why, maybe that's why it was called Maybe that. it was yeah. after yeah, that, it was. yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, victims were interred at 16 different cemeteries. Hmm. 22 victims of the fire were buried by the Hebrew Free Burial Association in a special section at Mount Richmond Cemetery. In some instances, their tombstones refer to the fire. Six victims remained unidentified until Michael Hirsch, a historian, completed four years of researching newspaper articles and other sources for missing persons and was able to identify each of them by name. Wow. That's, That's dedicated. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Those six victims were buried together in the Cemetery of the Evergreens in Brooklyn. Originally interred elsewhere on the grounds, their remains now lie beneath a monument to the tragedy, a large marble slab featuring a kneeling woman. Mm. Did you see that monument? No, I didn't go to that cemetery. Okay. No. Hmm. Mm. Um, but, you know, the cemetery I did go to in New York, known as Washington Square Park. Mm. Mm. Yes. It was an old cemetery. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's got a few thousand people interred there as one of the earlier cemeteries. Okay. I believe in that area of New York. And they were like, well, we need a park. Cemetery will do. Right. But, <laughs> so is there still some kind of... Identifying factor. I think I think there's plaques, right? Yeah. Some um somewhere. Mm. Um, but no, they got rid of all the headstones. They took them all out. Oh, that's so yeah. awful. Um, yeah. what does it mean by the word interred? Does it mean like buried, buried, got or rid of. cremated, or cremated? Some kind. I think I think it means their remains were disposed mm. of in yes. a particular way. So whether right. it's the the it means um, bodily of. remains or yeah. the cremated remains, right? Yeah. So, so their their body is not there in some way. Yes. Well, I guess all of these bodies were cremated for them, weren't they? Oh, oh too Oh, that's yeah. awful! <laughs> no, most of them were a bloody mangled pulp. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. They probably were <laughs> cremated because they couldn't have yeah. an open well, casket. Ex- well, definitely no oh, open caskets there. Oh, that makes me really sad. <laughs> Well, um, let's learn about what happened to the, or what the consequences mm. were. The com- so there should be, yes. yeah, this was accidental or not. Absolutely. Fucking locking, like, escape yeah. doors. Yeah, yeah like, theft. what the hell? Exactly like, penny right. fucking, well, they're going to steal triangles. Their shirt, no, the shirts. <laughs> the shirts. Steal the triangles. Yeah, what's it called? Them. A triangle factory. I don't know. Was that the, the, the name? Was, that was the name Wait, of the company, was triangle. triangle. All right. So, yes, it's dumb. Yeah. <laughs> Before you go on that, a shirt waist was as so. Think about the era in terms of fashion for like, those of you who like know. A triangle. It was no. literally like well, it makes your boobs look like a triangle. Yeah, it would. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I kind of do. Yeah. So they're the kind of shirts. Thinking about the era, they're the kind of shirts that that when they wear them, they tuck in yeah. really, really tight at the waist, and they're sort of fluffy. So it's like and a they triangle have, shape. They have like bud, like a really fluffy sleeves, and yeah. then they taper down to the wrist. Yes. So they're usually white, and yeah. 
Yeah. Look up a shirt waist and you know what I'm talking about. Mm. <laughs> well, that's what they made there. Yeah. Right. So and they're going do out look of like triangles. Yeah, they do look mm. like triangles. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I guess, I mean, 1911, I'm not sure how, like, when the fashion changed, but by the time, obviously, they got to the 20s, fashion was so different. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, so, consequences and legacy. The company's owners, Max Blank and Isaac Harris, who survived the fire by fleeing to the building's roof when the fire began, were indicted on charges of first and second degree manslaughter. Good. Mm. Yeah. How, did, how did they so quickly get to the fucking top and they just leave their workers yeah. in the factory? That's yeah. awful. I think it, it sounds to me like it was kind of dependent on what floor you were on because if yeah. you, you know, it started on, what was it, like the eighth floor so, and then yeah. like the ninth floor didn't know anything about it because that was the floor that the women worked on yeah um, so they got like on the other yeah. floors then yeah the 10th yeah, floor got a phone go. call so the 10th floor if the 10th floor got a phone call then the 10th floor might have been like the secretary and office floor yeah so Possibly. then so then they, they, they would go to the top yeah. They yeah. Had time yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. still pisses me off that like the foreman escaped though I know oh, right? yeah that's because oh. he would have been unlocked the door, the door. Yeah. I know he's so new well he just like, didn't unlock it like yeah. it was always oh, no, locked true, yeah. Yeah. and he just ran before thinking like oh what about all the women workers yeah maybe I should give them an escape route what an asshole and if the place why wouldn't he just leave the door open well, like, it was weighted door mm. yeah still fucked anyway so the, the trial began on December 4th, 1911. Uh, Max Stoyer, counsel for the defendants, managed to destroy the credibility of one of the survivors, Kate Alterman, by asking her to repeat her testimony a number what? of times, which she did without altering key phrases. Stoyer argued to the jury that Alterman and possibly other witnesses had memorised their statements and might have might even have been told what to say by the prosecutors. The prosecution charged that the owners knew the exit doors were locked at the time in question. The investigation found that the, do that the locks were intended to be locked during working hours based on the findings from the fire, but the defence stressed that the prosecution failed to prove that the owners knew that. The jury acquitted the two men of first and second degree manslaughter, but they were found liable of wrongful death during a subsequent civil suit in 1913 in which plaintiffs were awarded compensation in the amount of $75 per deceased victim. Only $75. Jeez. Even back then, that's not a lot of money. No, it's really not. It's yeah. like a few weeks work. Yeah. Yeah, that's bullshit. The insurance company paid Blank and Harris about sixty thousand dollars more than the reported losses, or about four hundred dollars. <laughs> oh, that's so day. fucked. Yeah, that's so fucked. And the family's only got oh, seventy-five dollars. Oh, seventy-five dollars, and yet they and they got four hundred dollars per casualty. Yeah, yeah. It kind of like so they made they profit they, they prof profited out of it. Yeah, yeah. They made profit oh. out of people dying and their that, workers yeah. dying that's i didn't kind of, read that properly before yeah. i thought they had lost money out of it but no they didn't no they made uh, money that's made ridiculous money. that reminds me of the flip side of the radium girls because mm. the radium girls they lost a fuck ton of money when they got sued yeah, yeah they, did, they lost yeah. a lot of money yeah, yeah. and they like got hundreds they of got thousands of dollars no, they do too. they got hundreds yeah. of thousands of dollars yeah but these people and their families got bloody jack shit really oh yeah and the bloody owners made off with fucking yeah yeah. That's awful. Well, get this. In 1913, Blank was once again arrested for locking the door <gasps> in his factory during working hours. <sighs> he was fined $20, which was the minimum amount the fine could be. Fucking, I hate this like, guy. After, this time he after gets, like, like, ball cancer or yeah. something. <laughs> and then he's thrown in a fire. Like, what a fucking asshole. Yeah, I, yeah. I guarantee. I reckon now. Yeah, now that you know more about his personality, I reckon it was fucking arson. Oh yeah, for again sure. for like the fifth time. And seeing how much he gets, yeah, an insurance payout. Exactly. How much the insurance payout was it was? And then he fucking escaped so early and uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, arsehole. Yeah, and then twenty, and then he goes and does, does, he didn't learn from that, did he? He didn't learn from having the doors locked and yeah, but he only got fined twenty dollars. Oh, and well, he profited off the last lot of people yeah. who didn't get out of his yeah. building. He's yeah. probably hoping to do it again. What a prick! Yeah, it's like mass murder. Yep. Well, that's that's kind of about as much as um, is there about the fire itself, but it still goes on to talk about um, the effects on mm. uh, law and uh, yeah. union movements that it had. Uh, Rose Schneiderman, a prominent socialist and union activist, gave a speech at the memorial meeting held at the Metropolitan Opera House on April 2nd, 1911, to an audience made up 
largely made up of members of the Women's Tra Trade Union League. Mm. She used the fire as an argument for factory workers to organise and quoted, I would be a traitor to these poor burned bodies if I came here to talk in good fellowship. We have tried you good people of the public and we have found you wanting. We have tried you citizens. We are trying you now and you have a couple of dollars for the sorrowing mothers, brothers and sisters by way of a charity gift. Mm. But every time the workers come out in the only way they know to protest against conditions which are unbearable, the strong hand of the law is allowed to press down heavily upon us. Mm. Public officials have only words of warning to us, warning that we must be intensely peaceable and they have the workhouse, um, and they have the workhouse just back of all their warnings. The strong hand of the law beats us back when we rise into the conditions that make life unbearable. I can't talk fellowship to you who are gathered here. Too much blood has been spilled. I know from my experience, it is up to the working people to save themselves. The only way they can save themselves is by a strong working class movement. <laughs> yeah, workers rise. Yeah. <laughs> Reminds me to join my union. Yeah, I need to yes, join my union join as well. Union. Everyone join your yes. union. True. Um, others in the community and in particular in the ILGWU, the uh, Working Women's Union, uh, drew, different lesson, drew a different lesson from the events. In New York City, a committee on public safety was formed headed by eyewitnesses Frances Perkins, who 22 years later would be appointed to United States Secretary of Labor to identify specific problems and lobby for new legislation, such as the bill to grant workers shorter hours in a work week, known as the 54-hour bill. The committee's representatives in Albany obtained the backing of uh, Tammany Hall's Al Smith, the majority leader of the Assembly, and Robert F. Uh, Wagner, the majority leader of the Senate. And this collaboration of machine politicians and reformers, also known as do-gooders or goo-goos, goo -goos. <laughs> goo got results, especially since... Tamani's chief, Charles F. Murphy, realised the advantage to be had from being on the side of the angels. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Sometimes Wikipedia, because Wikipedia articles are edited by the public, mm. sometimes there's sections that are just like words. Yes. I oh, know, just, <laughs> just feel that like words. Felt like word salad. <laughs> just words. Just words. Yes. Yeah. That needs an edit. Yes, it so does. Um, where did I get up to? The New York State Legislature then created the Factory Investigating Commission to investigate factory conditions in this and other cities and to report remedial measures of legislation to prevent hazard or loss of life among employees through fire, unsanitary conditions and occupational diseases. Mm. And there's, there's just a lot of legal stuff. Legal jargon. Le legal jargon. This was interesting. New York City's fire chief told the investigators that his department had identified more than 200 factory factories where conditions made a fire like that at the Triangle Factory possible. Wow. Mm. So there you go. It was a good thing they Systemic did that problem. inquiry. Mm. Yeah. And I bet a lot of them were owned by the same people. Yeah. Yeah, mm. probably. And out of this, um, uh, the State Commission's reports helped modernise the state's labour laws, making New York State one of the most progressive states mm. in terms of labour reform. Good. New laws mandated better building access and egress, fireproofing requirements, the availability of fire extinguishers. Woo, fire extinguishers. Woo. Yep, we all get fire extinguishers. Woo. The installation of alarm systems and automatic sprinklers, better eating and toilet facilities for workers, <laughs> and limited the number of hours that women and children could work. <laughs> Lucky for those children. Yes. <laughs> well, children shouldn't even be working, but anyway. Yeah, exactly. Um, I want that at my work. Limited out, limited out. No. Um, safe toilets. <laughs> <laughs> have a yeah. light. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, not pitch black. Oh my god, I've actually been going to the toilet in a pitch black toilet oh, recently. There you go. Which is we're just because it's my favourite toilet. Oh. Like I don't have to use that one, but I just like that one. Yeah, I mean we have other ones to use too, but I want to use the staff toilet, even if it is bloody pitch black, if I can't get into the disabled toilet. Yes, well that's that's most of the content. I mean there's you know a section on uh, remember the Triangle Fire Coalition and popular culture. <gasps> popular culture. Popular culture. 
popular culture. Oh, you know right. I love the popular culture I stuff. Hate the popular okay, well, culture. look, I'll, I'll go towards the. Let me see. So there's Films this is being referenced in popular culture. Uh, as apparently, as soon as I read stuff or hear stuff like this, straight away my brain goes to, "Oh, could this be in a movie? Could I know, this, but that's the thing. Why couldn't you scene? just think of that without us going through the popular culture? I hate that. Because I want to know culture. if it's already been done. I'm just I'm just trying to look for like more modern ones. So <laughs> from, um, let me see. What's an old one that was... Oh, okay. Well, an old one starting in 1912, The Crime of Carelessness, 14 yeah. minutes short, inspired by the Triangle Factory Fire, directed by James Oppenheim. That was a Thomas, yeah, it's by Thomas Edison's body production company. Oh, okay, awesome. so we won't watch that. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, well, no, so now I'm going to some more modern ones. American Pop, 1981, an adult animated musical drama film written mm. by Ronnie Kern and directed by Ralph Bakshi features a scene taking place in the fire. Oh, mm. lovely. Uh, Those Who Don't Tell, The Ongoing Battle for Workers' Health, 1990, produced by Abby Ginsberg, narrated by Studs Terkel. Okay. Sometimes I see people's names on Wikipedia articles and they have their own Wikipedia articles. I'm like, I've never seen that name before in yeah, my no, life. Right? Why do you have a Wikipedia article? Yeah. Why are you significant? Yeah. Mm. Mm. The mm. Living Century, Three Miracles, 2001, premiered on PBS, focusing on the life of a 107-year-old Rose Friedman, oh, who died in 2001, who was the last living survivor of the fire. Oh, oh wow. wow. Yeah. She was the one that gave that speech, at the, wasn't it? Yeah. She probably been a bit young at the time. Ruth. Wait, she are you going to make me speech. scroll all the way back? Yes. Well, she gave that speech about... It was... Yes. No, Rose Schneiderman. Oh, another Rose. 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 So everyone was called Rose. Well, Rose, well, Rose was a very, very, other name. very common <laughs> name back then. Yes. Very common She's name. She's on the Titanic. <laughs> Not every Rose. <laughs> Imagine every Rose on the Titanic. Yes. Every Rose has its thorn. In Titanic. Yeah. <laughs> the Titanic is the thorn. No, the iceberg Spurg. is the, the thorn. Iceberg thorn is definitely the iceberg. In Titanic side. Or was it the door? Mm. No, the iceberg no, is the definitely thorn. Definitely the <laughs> uh, American the, Experience, oh. Triangle Fire 2011. This is stuff called Triangle Fire. Triangle, triangle remembering, remembering the Fire. fire. Oh, that's amazing. It's a HBO. Oh my God. You're going to look that up now, aren't you? I am. Read it out, because we can see the... the yeah. I can't see it. Triangle, Remembering the Fire, 2011 premiered, premiered on HBO on March 21st, four days short of the 100th anniversary. <sighs> In season one, episode four of the CW TV sitcom Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, characters Rebecca Bunch and Greg Serrano are on an awkward first date, but then they start to bond after their shared interest in the Triangle <gasps> Shirtwaist Factory Fire. That's amazing. With Greg calling it his favourite fire, <laughs> this foreshadows Rebecca's past as an arsonist. Oh, oh my god. So I haven't watched that show, but it's it's I have heard a bit about it and that's actually quite good. Um but that's pretty his favourite fire. They're both like me on a date talking about yeah, my, my favourite murder. Your favorite murder. Do you yeah. have a favourite murder? Yeah. What's your favourite murder? Um if you knew it was a favourite murder you would just have too me. many. <laughs> too many favourite It's like murders. when people ask me about my favourite film. I'm like, I have too many favourite. Well, probably my favourite. <laughs> Not my favourite because it's you know, great. It's just caught my interest from a young age would be the assassination of JFK. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, what's your favourite serial killer? Ooh. Aileen Wernos. You know is that the, is that, That's the one that the, the movie about Sharice Theron is oh. about? Well, it's not about Shalice Theron. No, but like, okay, Sharice Theron plays played that person. Aileen Warner. In yes. Monster. Monster. Yes, yes, correct. I don't... She, uh, yeah. she was a sex worker... Yes. ...who got done over by life, really, and yeah. men got sick of their shit. Yeah. Um, well, the kind of accident one, killed one in self-defence. The first one was a death in self-defence. Yes, and then she was kind of like, well, this is easier than sucking cock. Um, I'm going <laughs> to stab them and take their money. Um, but also her evil lesbian girlfriend made her do it and then dobbed her in, like, jerk. Well, she didn't really dob her in. She... She, fra- she, she framed her because she was at a wire. Did yeah, she work? She sided with the bloody police. She probably had no choice. She had a choice. It would have been either, hang on, it would have been either her go to jail for the rest of her life or her girlfriend go to jail for the rest of her life. I mean, what would you do? Oh, she didn't go to jail for the rest of her life. She got the fucking death penalty and died for the rest of her life. Yeah, but that's the thing. She probably, she probably would have gotten the same treatment if she, she didn't. She should have. She was part of it. She, she just probably because would she have. didn't hold the trigger, she still had part of it. Does she it, still made her go out and do it. But can you imagine making that decision? What? 
that either you die or your loved one dies. Oh, she, loved not, she would have stuck with her and not thrown her <sighs> under the bus, so to speak. I wouldn't throw you under the bus. So you would die for me? Yes, I would. No. You're, You're adorable, thought, but thought... not, everyone else, not everyone would do that. Anyway, that's probably my favourite serial killer. I thought you were going to kill them. <laughs> uh, sorry, I thought Frank was going to kill Scout. No, 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 no. Say I kill a bunch of people. Scout tells me to do it. I would cover for you. Okay. Like, say I knew about it I, anyway. I'm there yeah. for an accessory. Yes. So right? then the police, oh. is, police go to Scout saying, tell us about this, these murders. You know about these murders. <laughs> In the film, Scout goes on a wire and calls me. Yeah. And tries to get me to confess over yeah. the phone. And they do. Yeah. And I go to jail and I die. In jail because yeah, I got a death penalty. penalty. That's what happens in the movie. Scout is saying that they wouldn't do that. No, I wouldn't bloody no. sign with the cops and be, you know, You're put on a wire. It with the is because you—they're offering you basically a plea plea deal to be like, right, you work with us and we'll forget that you're an accessory. To That's this. an incredibly hard decision to make. No, it's no, it's not. If well, she loved her, she wouldn't have done that. She was using her the whole time. Okay. Yeah. No, but I meant that more in the sense that that um, Frank, you'll turn off scouts. Life support. Oh, well, yeah, but that's that's, that's, that's the deal. That's different. That's 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 part of the bargain of being married. <laughs> Good to know. Yes, it is. I'll you need to find someone who shares mind. the same values yeah. about mm. turning off life support. Yes, correct. Or understands yours. Exactly. Like we worked up very early on that you got my thing about not wanting to be a fucking vegetable. Um, yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. Mm. Yeah. Advanced care directive. Get one. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's a friendly did... message from your <laughs> healthcare worker. So we did look up that shit, and it was more like if you're married partners, you kind of already have that stuff. Huh? Yeah, we looked up all that stuff about power of attorney oh, and did, stuff, yeah. and it was like yeah. if you're married partners, you kind oh, of already kind have all of that. Like, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Besides love and all that, blah blah blah. blah. Yeah. yeah, that's why we got married too. Yeah. It was because we didn't want to have to put extra paperwork. Yeah, it was just more like marriage. Like a marriage certificate's like a catch-all. It is. It actually <laughs> is a catch-all. You don't have to do all this. Heaps more paperwork yeah. and filing stuff. And even same with like your super. Yeah. Like I know, it just right? like goes mm. to your to your spouse yeah. as a default. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, but not we're completely off topic. <laughs> yeah, totally off topic. Yeah. Um so What's my favourite my favourite murder, my favourite serial killer. Serial killer, what else? You just told me what your, your favourite fire. Oh yes. my favourite fire would be Anything to do with spontaneous human combustion. Uh, oh, that's such a good answer. Uh, <laughs> and Frank moans. I hate it. Uh, my favourite haunting would be the Mary Celeste. Oh, Ooh, yeah. But is that actually a haunting? Because well, it's not that they disappeared. <laughs> No, it's not really a haunting. That's like a disappearance. I yeah. guess so. Unsolved mystery. Oh, that's true. Yes. Sorry. That would be an unsolved mystery. Favourite natural disaster. Ooh. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about this conversation. Yeah, I know. Mm. I don't know if I have a favourite. No, I don't know about natural disasters. I might say... Really? Natural disasters kill a lot of innocent people. Yeah. True. It's not about people being bad to each other. No. That's yeah. true. Fair. Um, favourite assassination that's not JFK? Oh. Franz Ferdinand. John Lennon. John Lennon. Yeah. He was assassinated in France, Ferdinand. Why? Because his death caused so much more stuff to happen. That, that's it? a really good point. His death caused oh, World War One. So I just see yes. France Ferdinand. Ferdinand and I, I think that was heard the... around Europe. Yes, well, France Ferdinand's was, death yeah. caused World War One. We're not talking about the band, right? No, 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 no. Called World talking War. Talking about the Archduke. The Archduke France Ferdinand, right. who's yes. the band is named after. Yeah, yeah. Yes. His death caused World War One, and World War One caused World War Two. Yes. And the Great mm-hmm. Depression and all of that stuff. So without Franz Ferdinand's death, yes. much of what we know about whole the, 20th the century, whole 20th century really. would not be true. Yeah. Okay. So the Vietnam War wouldn't have happened, the bombings of Hiroshima Cold and Nagasaki War. wouldn't have happened, the Cold War wouldn't yeah. have happened, pretty much all Space 20, race. Yes, all of yeah. 20th century yeah. history would be vastly different if his death didn't occur. Wow. Now, talk about the butterfly effect. Yeah, well. Oh, that's creepy. Mm-hmm. This is the butterfly effect. So if, you could Fate. Go, so if you could go back in time and stop something from happening. I probably wouldn't stop that from happening no. because I can't imagine what the world would be like without it. But you'd get to see that. Yeah, but it could be completely worse. 
You know, it could be worse. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't know. It could be worse in terms of the tensions build Mm. up more and more and more later in history. Uh, we, we, yeah, when we had later. more weapons. Yeah, more and more weapons cause more, more destruction. destruction. So yeah. maybe, oh, I say so, so on, it's like um, sex tension. They're just like tense about yeah, maybe the tense. forever. Yes. I guess the year 2020 and then someone's just at the button and go. Yeah, pretty it's- much. Yeah, pretty much. Like gets get, the get, button get and the whole like, world fucking implodes. Get to like the 60s when the Cold yeah. War was happening and everyone was dealing and dallying with nuclear weapons mm. and everyone's tense because no one's fought with each other yet. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, boom, nuclear war. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah, that's very true. But it could you, get a lot worse. So you, wouldn't, so you wouldn't change it? Probably not because I don't want that to happen. <laughs> but, but you know it nearly didn't as well? What? Um, the Franz Ferdinand nearly wasn't assassinated. Yes. Because it wasn't. was actually the person who was like fifth in line mm. to assassinate him accidentally shot him. Yeah. <laughs> he stumbled upon he him in a street. Yeah. 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 So there were a group of people, there were Serbians called the Black Hand. Yeah. Serbians, is that right? Yeah, I think that's right. And they, yeah, they planned to kill him and they kind of missed the first few times. Mm. And this last guy who was like, I don't know, getting a sandwich He was or getting something. a sandwich he and was, he was walking out of the sandwich shop. And Franz Ferdinand was, was there. there. Yeah. So he shot him. Yeah. <laughs> and I, like, I was told, I mean, I don't know how true this was. This is probably like sensationalized on the tour I went on in Sarajevo but they took us to the street corner where it happened and like the tour guide said this is what happened she covered her eyes pointed her fingers like a gun and went bang and like that she was like that's what he did he covered his eyes he mm. pointed in the vague direction of him because he didn't want to do it yeah yeah and shot the gun and managed to get him yeah. Look, can you imagine that like being that one person to shoot so because this guy was shot guy. yeah all these other things happened yes yeah because what happened they is all blamed they each blamed other. each other for mm-hmm. who killed who and who was angry. And why so, they did it. Yeah, and, and who was hangry at yeah. who and eventually it just could turn into... Did you say hangry? Hangry. Angry. <laughs> hangry. I'm sure who. they were hangry. And they were Austro-Hungarians, they were definitely. <laughs> definitely yeah. hangry. They were hangry. But yeah. a sandwich guy. Like. Yeah, true. They all blamed he each wasn't other. Hungry. And no, he wasn't hangry. He but got he... a sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. But that caused the First World War. How? Because one, so the Obviously Serbian, I wasn't taught someone history. was angry. What I do know is what I've taught myself. The, but. The per- this, this could be a whole other podcast. It could be. Oh, right, it could right. be. World War, no, World War I history could be an entire podcast, not just an episode, yeah, an yeah. entire podcast. Yeah, I'm sure there is it's one. It's very complicated. I'm sure there is one. Basically, they all get angry at each other and sort of blaming each other, and some countries sided with other some countries, mm. and some countries sided with other countries, and they all declared war on each other. Yeah. yeah. But then after that, if at the very end of World War One they had the Treaty of Versailles, which basically said to Germany, you can't do shit. Germany got angry. Okay. And that's how the fascist regime came into yeah. it. And then they got World War II. Yeah. Mm. That was very succinct. Nicely done. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> you yeah, did a lot like... better than like my year 11 history teacher. <laughs> maybe I should be a history teacher. Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah. <laughs> be like, German, you can't, Germany, you can't do shit. Yeah. And then, then they get angry. angry. Yeah. And yeah. fascist regime. And that's, then yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hitler. Yeah. And, and Hitler made the like leader of France signed the surrender document yes. in, for when France surrendered in the Second World War in the same train car that the Germans had to sign the Treaty of Versailles. Oh, oh, wow. oh, that's a bit extra. Oh, that's a bit extra. <laughs> that's a little bit extra. Yeah, that was a bit extra. Oh, Hitler was, though, wasn't he? Well, he had Just one ball. Bit, so. Did he? Yes, he had one ball. Is that true? I have. To, why are you looking at me? I because don't, you're a history <laughs> nerd just like me. I don't have that much information on Hitler's genitalia off the top of my head. I did, do, I did hear that he had Parkinson's towards the end of his life, oh, though. Yeah. And he wasn't that old, How did he, he kill himself then? No, yeah, because he it, was, it wasn't like advanced Parkinson's. He was hiding oh, okay. it. Did he shoot himself? Yes, yeah. and poisoned did himself. Did Hitler have poison a poison shot? Yes, yeah, cyanide pill, right? Something no, like that. No, he shot himself. Yeah, both. No, I think he did both. both. Yeah, I was got told he had one ball. That's all I know about history. Well, Among conspiracy buffs, this is um, <laughs> That's probably why. <laughs> this is I read on, all the things about conspiracy. Doesn't matter. Oh, what yes. about my favourite conspiracy? Oh, hang on, let me finish this. <laughs> it does Straight, matter if you have This one is ball. on website straightdope.com. Oh, must be trustworthy. <laughs> right. Among conspiracy buffs, this is what known as a hem, the lone nut theory. Mm. 
But let's get to get serious. The case of Hitler's missing testicle is one of many bizarre twists in the life of one of history's most bizarre hombres. So man, he was very bizarre, and I blame the one not. Another is the never proving <laughs> allegation that Hitler's paternal grandfather was Jewish. The, oh, I did hear that too. I the bit that. of dog roll favoured by your landlord probably goes something along the following. Originally sung by British Tommies during World War Two to the tune of oh, tune Hitler. of Cologne he only has one ball. ball. Yes, Goering has two, but very very small. <laughs> I don't know that Hitler <laughs> is very similar and Gobbles has no balls at all. Oh my <laughs> god. Why did Gobbles have no balls? Because Gobbles it's in the song. It's in the song. Oh. It goes in the song. Well, in- they're saying that he had no balls. Um, was he gay? Was it go- no, was Goebbels oh. the... Is he the... Um, the, 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 the oh, no, they, they all have the same sounding name. I know, right? It. Was Goebbels the one who was the... Uh, what's the one they make the films about the, the films about war and... Oh, like, propaganda. Yes, was he yeah. the propaganda dude? Uh, yeah, Goebbels. But- I appreciate sure yes, the propaganda that's, dude. that's correct. He was, and Himmler, he was Himmler Reich was, Minister of Propaganda. Yeah, and Himmler was like Hitler's right hand man, but I'm yeah. pretty sure he was gay anyway. And Hitler knew that, yet he still made him like go and round up the homosexuals. And Goering was like the war chief or something. One of them was a war chief. He he was Reichsführer of the Schutzstaffel. <laughs> Trying to get my German accent mm, on nice. there, which I don't have anymore. Um, uh, leading member of the Nazi Party of Germany, just leading member. Okay. I can't translate Schutzstaffel off the top of my head. I'm Neither sorry. Can I. Many years of German. Okay, there's a whole article about about Hitler's balls. Uh-huh. I'm not going to read it because it's save a that lot. for but another episode. That's a, that's a conspiracy. Does Hitler only have one ball? So that's not my favourite conspiracy. What is your favourite conspiracy? Ow. Oh, and this is for another episode, moon landing. Oh. Oh. No, don't do another episode. <laughs> do you want to be in the because, car for that? No, because people have very heated arguments yes. about that. Yes, we I do. want to be in the car for that. Oh, but yes, God. you do. Um, you might have to hold Frank away from me. Oh. <laughs> I remember the one time that I that I eventually said, that, yeah, I'm not sure the moon landing happened. I was I so thought bad. we were going to break up. <laughs> I was like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Because I, I go along the whole argument, we would not have the technology that we have today yeah. if the moon landing didn't occur. Yeah. yeah Thank but you. there's many yeah. other arguments for that too. Okay, whatever. That's for another episode. That um, for I'm another trying to think episode. of my favourite conspiracy theory. Not the moon landing. Anti-vaxxers isn't really a conspiracy no. theory anymore. It's kind of fucked. What about Flat Earth? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah that's kind of funny. It's so stupid, but it's so funny. I love it. It is funny. It is funny. Um, the 9 11 one, as well, being caused what? by 9 11, oh. being caused by Jewish people. Oh, what? what? I've that's never a heard thing. That one that's Jewish a thing. People. Something no, about I Jewish people and nah. money. I'm not sure. I, nah. I don't agree with it. It's nah, completely it's stupid. Just, but it sounds like propaganda. Yeah, yeah. Probably, yeah, it definitely is. Although, Where's, I like, I don't believe in any particular conspiracy theories around 9 11, but I'm just in the ballpark of would not be surprised. If it was orchestrated by the US yeah. Oh, it totally oh, yeah. was. Yeah. That is up there with one of my favourite conspiracies, and I've watched quite a few documentaries about 9 11. <laughs> yeah. It was so fucking done from the inside. It was yeah, yeah. my job. I heard yeah. from mum sometimes she talked about the Jewish people causing 9 11. She said it as a term, and she didn't think it was true either. She said that she just heard it down the pipeline. But, but, but you know, you know what one of the money. Do you know, yeah. yeah, but do you know what one of history's favourite, like, things is, is let's blame the yeah, Jewish people. Say, the Jews did it. The Jews did everything. And so anytime I hear that, I'm like, no, that's just anti-Semitism. No. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's totally. being dumb. Yeah. yeah. It's just people, people always blame the Jewish people because they, they were historically the bankers and controlled the money. Yeah. Well, and also historically very easy to blame and historically mm-hmm. always other. Yes, mm, true. Agreed. Like being foreigners in Australia. Yes, yes thing, exactly. Kind of thing. Oh, look at their weird customs. Yeah, they're always yeah. the scapegoat. Yeah. Like, they always blame for everything. However, Inside job by the by it's by oh, America's yeah. own government for sure. Of course they fucking did it. Oh, but then you could also go along because the they... JFK was an inside job. It was yeah, probably probably. probably. Well, wasn't, fucking... he, wasn't he shot by the guy in the front of the car? No, no, I no. Heard, he was I heard so... that was a thing. It was a theory, but no, he was totally shot from uh, up in the the factory warehouse thing Lee... by like Lee, Lee Harvey, Harvey Oswald. Oswald. However, where did Oswald get his sniper training from? US the government. fucking US government. Was he a was he a soldier? He was a communist. Yeah, but was he a soldier? Um, Did he get his? No, I don't think he, he was, was a soldier. No, he was not. Oh. He was just trained. 
Yeah. By who? Anyway, exactly. Another. That's for another body episode yeah. as well. This this has gone on quite a tangent. I that's, love this has. It's it it a great. It. It's a great. It's a great tangent. What other conspiracy theories are there? <laughs> I think, I think no, how did we start? Okay. How did we what start? Is, well, triangle shirt front factory fire. Shirt waist factory. Shirt waist. Shirt, shirt front. Shirt front. Yeah, but I got a shirt you front. Shirt yeah. front. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> how do we get from, you want your conspiracy? Yeah. yeah. How do we go from that to well, everything? <laughs> favorite disappearance. Oh, favorite was, fire. It was favorite, favorite fire. fire from the popular but, culture. But now you're making me think of my favorite disappearance. Well, my favorite disappearance would have to be something like Amelia Earhart. Oh, oh that's a up good one. there. Yeah. And Lindenberg baby. Yes, that's one of the one I was thinking mm-hmm. of. It was planes. Yes. It's with planes and disappearing. I know, right? You've got the M17 flight from not that long ago. Yeah, because the government don't like it when people advance too far with their technology. Mm. Government <laughs> go, no, everything no, is no, the no, news no. about Bring the government it. controlling no, everything. No. Bring it back in. No, no. We're I'm for the government. We'll that person. You work for the healthcare system. I'm in public health. I don't know anything <laughs> about what the government is. They don't give you any clues at all. <laughs> no, they um, definitely don't. Favorite disappearance. Favorite. Favorite. Hmm. Who's your favorite serial killer then? I don't have a favorite serial killer. Who has favorite serial killer? This one has a favorite us. serial killer. <laughs> um, kind of wanted to say Ted Bundy mm. because so charming. Because yes, that's why. So creepy. And it's like, yeah, why? Why do people find him so charming well, even after he killed so many women? Yeah. Because he was still charming. You can't take that He's away. A psychopath. Yeah, but, yeah. Or a sociopath. Well, yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, I just spent all day learning about Frederick Bailey Deeming, Australia's mm. first serial killer. First. Yeah. How do we know? How do we know he was the well, first? Well, I'm assuming he wasn't because I'm assuming there were a lot of soldiers who killed a lot of Indigenous people. But other yeah, than true. That, Technically, yeah. Like that's from, massacre, not serial yeah, killer. Like, that's, <laughs> that's, that, that, yeah, that's, that's, that's different. True. It is a little that, bit that different, different to doing yeah. serial killer things. Yeah. yeah, serial killer activity is a little bit different. But yes, I wasn't first. sure how they classify all these things. Yeah, well, I suppose. Is there a classification? I suppose mm-hmm. in regards yeah. to the colonizers killing Aboriginal people, it's more of a institutionalized, institutionalized and is okay. Quotation marks. Appro- quotation again, marks. Approved by the government. Right. So that makes yeah. it genocide. Yes, yes. Okay. exactly. It makes all a genocide. Right. What we call now genocide. Because but back then, it was doing what you were told to do. Yeah. It was your job. Yeah. yeah. Um, serial killers. Yeah, they don't work for anyone. They're rogue. They're rogue. Agents. Agents. Exactly. Rogue and agents. that's why the government doesn't protect them because. <laughs> They're rogue. They're exactly oh, right. They're rogue, rogue agents. agents. They're working for themselves. Yeah. yeah. They're like, I don't give a shit. I kill whoever I want. Pretty much. Yeah. Mm. So that would well, be when you look at it that way. Mm. I'm trying mm. to think of any other favorite creepy things. <laughs> Aren't you doing an entire podcast I... on your favorite <laughs> creepy <laughs> things? Out of okay, okay. Like, come but across it. The... No, I, oh I've God. never been able to decide on my favorite nuclear disaster. Oh, how could you? Oh. They're all really different mm. from each other. There's about four that I can. No, four. Yes. Four. I don't even kind of think of Chernobyl. Was that Chernobyl? Yeah. Fukushima. Oh, yeah. I count Hiroshima and Nagasaki all as nuclear accidents. They were, they were They're not accidents. They were, they were, they were planned. planned, but they were okay. nuclear events. Nuclear events. Okay. Yeah. They were the four major they ones. Can't. There's lots and lots of little ones, but the four major ones. And I can't, I couldn't say any of them my favourite because mm. they're all very different. Yeah, mm. that's fair. What about your favourite um, death, deadly disease? Oh, that's a good one. Mm, I thought you'd like that one. Favorite deadly disease. Mm. They're all so good. <laughs> um, TB. Oh yeah, it's high up there because TB is <laughs> one of those ones where it's so <laughs> fascinating nice sound because effect. you don't know yeah. you're dying exactly. until you're dead. That happened to my character in Red Dead Redemption too. <laughs> yeah, get TB, Arthur. Oh. Yeah, because the thing is, right? We didn't really know <laughs> how to find to TB, and then they had T. Then they did X mass X-ray screenings of mm. TB, especially in like in London in London, the 50s. Yeah. And then they found out, like, yeah, you can find TB, but you need to have max X-ray screenings to do that. Yeah. And, and it's, it's infectious. It's, it's very infectious, yeah. very, and it's latent. So it can stay in your system for years yeah, yeah. before it becomes... That's what I think happened to my character. Yeah, before it becomes yeah. active. And if you've been in, in contact with TB, mm-hmm. they do this particular skin prick test. Oh, I had to have a test for TB. Yeah. Oh, the Mantu test. Yes, the Mantu test, yes. I had to have the test before I started. 
my treatment you for do. Crohn's. Yes. Yeah. Um, they don't do it as a skin prick test anymore. No. They did it on my mum's day, so my mum's had the skin prick test. What's what skin prick they, test? Yeah. What's before I went on placement as a student, oh, we, had yeah. to, we had to have a skin prick oh, test. They, had, yeah. they do mine, just blood. Antibodies, I think. Yeah. I think but mum just... didn't have to have the man two. Had, mum, had, mum had the man two test. And she came up positive. But they did it again, or they did another test and found out she wasn't infected, but she had come into contact. Oh, really? So the Mantu test doesn't test if you're infected. It just tests if you have antibodies to the disease. Uh-huh. So if you've been in contact with someone who has it. So mum's been in contact, but she hasn't been infected. But mine came by. Back Negative. Yeah, 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 I haven't yeah. been in contact. No. Mm. No. Um... Another infectious disease. I kind of like diphtheria for the same reason. Respiratory diseases are fun. No, <laughs> as someone who gets respiratory infections, I don't like do you know, the sound of. Do you know what they dis- call diphtheria? The strangling angel. Yes. Because it affects children, doesn't really yeah. affect adults very much. Aww. Yeah, but like it slowly, slowly, slowly stops you from breathing. Mm. Like it constricts your lungs. Yeah. It's awful. You know, so fun. Um, favorite. Um, Sexually transmitted disease, Inf- infection, or infection. disease. I don't know a lot Syphilis about is those. Interesting. Syphilis is interesting because it makes you go crazy. <laughs> what's, yeah. that, what's that song that that um um? <laughs> Which one? Which one? Sorry, sorry. 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 I'm having a no, the one about the clap. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, the clap. <laughs> Gonorrhea. Yeah. Yeah, right. Gonorrhea is interesting. No, chlamydia is really interesting because koalas get yeah. chlamydia. They have chlamydia. Not they? all koalas. I thought they all did. They are, all have, have all chlamydia. <laughs> but it's a problem. Not a, hashtag not, not all koalas. koalas. <laughs> but it's a problem because it can... It's a problem. Koalas are a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Koalas are not a problem because it really affects the women koalas. The women koalas? What am the I saying? female koalas? The female koalas. <laughs> <laughs> the lady koalas. But I'm a lady. I'm a woman koala. I'm a lady koala. No, but the clap. In, no, the clap is gonorrhea, not oh, chlamydia. Sorry. God. <laughs> Get it right. Oh. <laughs> when it comes Something to diseases. chlamydia, if humans get it, you might not know it if you're a person with a uterus because you don't necessarily get symptoms, but mm. it can make you infertile. So for those of you who have sex, <laughs> go get yourself fucking checked. Virgins, you're okay. And oh. you're not going to die in a horror film either. No, no. <laughs> but seriously, get yourself checked. You don't want the chlamydia. Virgin, the virgins always live. <laughs> what? It's true. It's a joke. I don't I It's don't a horror film No, but like in, in Cabin in the Woods, did the virgin live? No, because they were taking the piss of the tropes yeah, right. and messing stuff up. Yeah, it's one of those films that is completely self-aware and it's so good though. <laughs> I know it's amazing and so clever. But I also find HIV really fascinating because of the social aspect of it. Oh, right. that is really fascinating. So about That's how so about sad. how it's sad and about how many people died and the fear surrounding it oh, and the so ad campaigns. Yes. I don't. I so wasn't alive for the ad campaigns, but I remember when I did some training that they showed this ad campaign where it's basically basically Grim Reapers bowling yes. people over. Yes. And I was like, holy shit, this is so bad. Mm. Like fear mongering wise. Yeah, it was. Oh, yeah. I can and only they thought it was like divine retribution. Yes. yes. And like it's like that. this could only yeah. contribute to the whole homophobia. Yeah, thing. of course it did. And that was Ooh. it was always those ads were virtually propaganda mm. for, right? people, for condemning homosexuals and yeah. being like, oh, you know, we're gonna know which one of you's are which one of you are hiding as homosexuals because you're, you're gonna, gonna get this disease and you, the Grim Reaper's gonna come and get you. Yeah. And then we're all gonna know on your deathbed that you're gay. But also that nowadays there are people out there who have no, who have been infected with HIV and have pre- previously had bacterial load, so that means how many yeah. bacteria you have in your blood, have no detectable limit, yeah. no detectable virus in it's their great. blood that now, is, yeah. which means they're practically cured. Yeah, it's great. I mean, you can never say that they're 100% no. cured, but on a clinical, like, testing level, mm. it's not there. That's amazing. Science yeah. is magic. Yeah. Science is magic. That works. That works. <laughs> it is magic that works. Yeah. So, what's your favourite diseases? You two? Oh, the plague. The yeah, plague. the plague is a good one. Yeah. I agree with the plague. Probably, 
I mean, you I know, think we there's, need there's, it. There's, there's the bubonic plague and yeah. like the pneumonitic plague, or I can't remember mm. how to pronounce it, but like the. Is it the P and pneumonitic? Something. Pneumonitic? Pneum something. That's, yeah. Like that. Yeah. yeah. I just like the term bubonic. 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 <laughs> yeah, why is it called bubonic? I don't know. Because of the bubos. 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 Oh, bubos. Yeah. That, Which are the uh, big pussy <laughs> Yeah, your, so. your, your lip yes. nose would like swell up and explode. With, yeah. Yeah. Mm, gross. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, I remember seeing pictures of that when I was younger. It's like, that's cool. I think we need a good plague. <laughs> Thin out the world. Yes. Mm. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, well, Ebola tried. Yeah, Ebola. And so did Zika. Back. Ebola's back. Ebola. Is it? Uh, Ebola's back. Guess who's back? Back, back again. again. Ebola's, Ebola's back. <laughs> Tell, Tell a friend. friend. <laughs> Zika tried, Zika failed. Mm. Zika didn't do well at all. But we're all measles already... is trying again. Yes, yeah, but that's just anti-vaxxers are being you get vaccinated. I actually children. had a warning. Yeah, I actually, had a, my work put out a warning because we have a Sydney campus, mm -hmm. and there's been a, um, measles in contact with, mm. with the university. Yeah. Vaccinate your children and yeah. your animals. There are people out there who are no, not vaccinating their animals because they're worried that animals are going to get autism. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm mean, not even that, joking. Is, like, is that even How would you even tell with cats? Like, I'm pretty sure Dusty's on the spectrum. Like, they, but, just, they just do their but own also thing as well. and that is fine. Is that like the worst thing ever for anyone to have autism? No. Right? No. Like, fuck off. Yeah. Like, there's so many ways to deal with that. And quite frankly, people who aren't neurotypical were mm. quite better. It's at kind of offensive. Let's have some debate. Yes, the world, exactly. Is all I'm to say. Yeah. Exactly. It's kind of offensive for you to say you'd rather child die of fucking measles than be autistic. Exactly. That's really offensive. And that, that's yeah. the core of it. I yeah, think. it yeah. is. And it's yeah. just downright offensive. It is yeah. really offensive. Yeah. So offensive. Yeah. Anyway, well, any other favorite diseases? Mm. I like diseases. Diseases are fun. <laughs> this is really. Until you get one. Until you get one. Mm. I mean, like studying diseases and how they work and how they spread. So, one of the very, very first epidemiological studies that was ever done was in London. And they worked out there was a big, a large amount of people getting. What was it called? Cholera, mm. which is a diarrheal disease transmitted from water. But they didn't mm. really know this at the That's time. Drinking dirty water? Drinking dirty yeah. water. So drinking water that has feces in it, mm -hmm. which has the cholera virus or bacterium. I don't know. I can't remember. The cholera <laughs> pathogen mm. in the water. Right, so they were trying to work out why are all these people in this particular area oh, in right. London I'm getting, getting cholera. So what this guy did is he went, okay, let's find all the cases of cholera and what what places of water they're getting their water from. And it but turned why do you out even think to check the water though? because I think he knew and yeah, no, he knew at that stage that cholera was spread by water, right, okay. but they didn't know where it was coming from. Yeah, the main source of the yeah. drinking water. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what they did is they worked out, ah, oh, all the people who were infected drink their water from this one well. Yeah. So it turned out one well or like a handful of wells mm. were infected with cholera. So they closed up the wells and the cases went away. Hmm. So one of the very first Smart. epidemiological studies to fix the problem. Smart. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Hey, anyway, how did we get to all that? Uh, that was that was a very winding road. That but one, but it was fun. It was we a had fun. fun. Road. It was pretty much it like having fun. our own Wikipedia loop. Really, yes. yes. The whole. Yes, this is what happens the, when you the when Wikipedia you hole. talk about Wikipedia. How do we how do we close the loop? Close the hole. Um, cover up the well. So, yeah. Triangle Shirt Waste Factory Fire, yes. everyone, join your union. Join your union. Vaccinate your children. Vaccinate your children. <laughs> and your dogs. <laughs> and your cats. And don't commit arson. Yeah, no arson. Arson is bad. Don't, Especially when you lock people in there. kill people. Yeah. Unless you need to. No. Not, don't, don't <laughs> not do promoting it. serial killers. Don't do yeah. it for the insurance payout. No. Don't, just don't, don't do, do it. it. Just don't do it. Don't do it for insurance. Don't don't do it anyway. Just mm. don't kill people. Don't kill regardless people. Regardless of how you do it. Yeah. Just don't do it. That's right. <laughs> don't lock the doors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unlock your doors. <laughs> Unlock the fire exits. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. We'll thanks, for, thanks for that, Cindor. That's cool. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Glad you glad you found it interesting and glad it spun such an interesting web. It did. <laughs> it did. It put us in the hole. The wiki hole. It All puts right. the Down lotion the in hole. the basket or it gets the hose again. 
Have you ever seen that? Yes, I've seen Silence of the Lambs. Came out before you were born. Doesn't matter, I've seen it. <laughs> What's that thing? <sighs> when did it come out? Well, 1990. Well, before we go into that, let's say goodbye. Okay. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Dark and Creepy Things. Bye. That's not what you say at the end. With? What? What? <laughs> you always say something at the end. Bye. No, it's what do I always say? Say. say? See you next time. See you next time. See you next time. Bye.